Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is another paid request, this time from Gunnel. They do so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, re reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1997 film Murder at 1600. He's a DC cop on the outside. She's a Secret Service agent on the inside. Tracking a White House homicide to the first family's front door. Murder at 1600, the address that changes all the rules. And I always like these Warner Brothers cases because I like the way they opened up. And you'd have like this here. I know you can't read the writing, but you know, you got some pictures there. And uh, I, I like even this thing here that clips yeah I always like these uh, and I always like this film it's not my favorite Wesley Stipes film that'd be like Demolition Man or such but this is a film that bombed when it came out got critically deriled deviled reviled a lot of vile put upon the film I don't really know why because I watched this again, I didn't really find much problems with it. I think it's entertaining escapism. The action scenes are not crazy, wild, extravagant, but they're serviceable for what they need to be. And this is more of a thriller. And it's a you know, popcorn entertainment thriller. And this is a time where, and this is the back, no features. Um, I don't even know if this is on Blu-ray, but it's directed by Dwight H. Little, the same guy who directed Rapid Fire, Brandon Lee, Halloween 4, among other films. Uh, at this time, there were a couple of these political thrillers coming out. You had The Shadow Conspiracy with Charlie Sheen and Linda Hamilton from The Terminator. You had... Absolute Power with Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman. Even had comedies like Dave. So a bit of this political stuff coming out. And I like Dave, but for the thrillers, I always thought this is one of the better ones in that time period. I would say I like this more than Absolute Power. I definitely like this more than The Shadow Conspiracy. That's an awful fucking movie. The tasks work well. It goes by a very brisk pace. The story's interesting enough for me to wonder what's going to happen next. The action scenes, while again, they're not true lies. You know, they're not die hard, but they're serviceable. Was his nice just to show a little bit of his fighting? Not as, much, not as much as, say, Blade or Passenger 57, but he shows a bit of his fighting skills. Including one scene where he fights some people in an elevator. And like the cast, like Wesley Snipes plays your lead. A cop who's hired to look into... Well, the case is there's been a murder in the White House. And his partner is played by Dennis Miller. The Secret Service uh, liaison that he's been given is Diane Lane, who's a good actress. I always thought Diane Lane was a good actress. Oh, I should also mention Dwight Little. He worked on Steven Seagal's March for Death. That's another good movie. So, you know, March for Death, Rapid Fire. The guy knows how to handle action. And, yeah, those are better action movies than this. But, th again, this, this is supposed to be more of a thriller, not an action film. It, it's a thriller with some action pieces in it. But I mentioned the cast... Wesley Snipes, Dennis Miller, Diane Lane, who's not only beautiful, but talented actress. She, I thought, did a good job. Apparently, there there was going to be some romantic entanglements between the two of them, but it was cut out. It was cut out for stupid reasons where, oh, it's interracial. Who gives a... F to me, I would cut out because you don't need romance in every fucking film, and there's no time for love, Dr. Jones. Not because of interracial shit. That's stupid reasoning. That the reason is, sometimes there's no love. There's no time for love, Dr. Jones. Not every fucking movie has to have a love story. 
So I'm fine this doesn't have a love story. They could just be friends, comrades who work together. They just happen to be a man and woman. Doesn't always have to lead to love. I love Daylight. But that's one of the few issues I have with it. Like they try to have this love story and you don't need it. And the, the side characters are annoying as piss. But I, I, st I still like Daylight with Stallone. For a number of reasons. But the people still have to save. I'm like, just let him die, Sly. Just let him die. But I, yeah, I still like that film. But no, you didn't need a love story of this. I'm fine that was cut out. But the, the it was interracial... If that was a the reason, then that's racist, honestly. It's kind of racist. But yeah, it, it not everything needs a fucking love story. Other people, Alan Alda from the TV show MASH, he plays the National Security Advisor. Uh, Ronnie Cox from Robocop, Beverly Hills Cop, Total Recall. He plays the president, which he's right there. Always nice to see Ronnie Cox. This guy named Daniel Benzali, I think he was on TV for, I want to, I think the show was called Murder One. Uh, he's a good actor, he definitely brings an intensity to his role as part of the Secret Service. And yet the movie, it starts off hell with a... This guy is trying to commit suicide, and Wesley Snipes talks him down and then knocks him out. <laughs> and that's the kind of movie it is. It's an entertaining 90s escapism thriller. And I really do think it went at a good pace. I was never bored with the film. I'm watching it going, wow, this movie's going by fast. Because the cast work well together. Dense Miller is fun. As Wesley Snipes' partner. Snipes is a good leading man. He definitely... He's not sleepwalking through the role. You buy him. And as the character... He's got a good leading man presence and charisma. Like I said, there's a murder at the White House. So look into it. He's being kind of... Pushed around everywhere he goes. Not given information that he needs. So you, you gotta do his own digging. Diane Lane's worked with the Secret Service. But ultimately. Works with Wesley Stipes. When he, she also realizes there's something else going on here. Looking for clues. The two work. Rather well together. I thought. They had nice chemistry with each other. At least Turner Entertainment report Paul Clinton liked the movie. And you know when you, you're getting desperate for review quotes. When you get into Turner Entertainment report. I'm like who the hell is that? So it shows how belittled this was critically. And I don't really get why. I mean it's not going to change the face of action movies or thrillers. It's not completely original. But it's entertaining. It's fun because the cast work well. It's never boring. Wesley Snipes, you get to know a little bit about his character. Like, in his place, he's got this big model set of DC from, like, the 1860s. It makes me go, is he fucking rich? <laughs> like, how much does he make money as his homicide cop? Does he make a sh How much money does he make from it? Because this place looks fucking big. And this model looks bigger than my place. <laughs> it's a big fucking model of, like, DC. Almost as big as DC. So I'm like, how the fuck does he get money for all this? But pretty much he's being evicted, and that's kind of a running gag where he's trying to talk to people about him and people in the building getting evicted. Diane Lane, I like this moment where she mentions why she's not higher up in the uh, Secret Service because there's this one guy who was beating up on his girlfriend and she didn't punch him which that would have reminded me of the last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis 
But she's like, no, I want to do a different detail. And like I said, there's little bits of action. Yeah, I would not have minded more extravagant action set pieces. But there's a bit where they're chased by Secret Service and there's helicopter and cars chasing after them. I like that they set up that her character is a sharpshooter and that comes into play from time to time. Maybe it's not the most realistic where it talks about like the tunnels under DC and how they get to there and how Wesley Sipes gets into the White House. No, it's probably not the most realistic, but I bought into it for the escapism. But yeah, it was interesting, you know, like who's going to be the bad guy? There's a couple red herrings. Is it this guy? Is it this guy? And if you've never seen it, you may be surprised. Well, I don't know. You may be surprised at who's the bad guy because what the actors involved or the characters, it's like it could go either way. Does you know, Ryan Cox has played a bad guy, Total Recall. This guy, uh, Daniel Benzali, he definitely has an intensity to him. And it's entertaining. Like I said, I don't really get what's so bad about this. And I could go into more detail, but I kind of want people to check out and not give everything away. You know, there's a couple in all there's a couple all right shootout sequences. My Wesley Slice beats with a character who gets killed, and you got a little bit of action fighting there. I did nothing extravagant. But, at the very least, competent. I mean, no, it's not a gut-grabbing thriller. But, I definitely don't think it deserves the bad reviews, what, 30-some percent of Rotten Tomatoes? I definitely don't think it deserves that. I, I think, if you look, if you like Wesley Snipes, if you like this cast of characters... Or cast of actors. Like you know, Diane Lane. And Alan Alda. Ronnie Koch. Dennis Miller. I would like to have seen Dennis Miller in it a bit more. I do wish he was in it a bit more. Because he's fun to watch. He has a good sense of humor in it. Uh, other people involved. Christopher Young did the music. Christopher Young. He worked on Hellraiser among others. The score is fine. The score is more than competent. Co-producer Ralph S. Singleton, same Ralph S. Singleton that directed Stephen T's Graveyard Shift, he was a co-producer on this. Written by Wayne Beach and David Hod Hodgen. Don't know who they are. Great H. Little's Direction. Again, I would say the, the best comment I've mentioned before he kept the pace brisk. He kept the pace going. It felt like I was always somewhere else, where it it wasn't it didn't bog down. It kept going like okay, here's a clue. Then we're in this place. Then we're going to here. Then this is going like it never bogged. That's it. Never thought it was a stuck in the rut, boring as shit movie. That's a bit when they're being chased by the helicopter and also a vehicle. So you get an explosion there and such. And again, these two worked rather well together. And Wesley Snipes showed he was a very capable leading man. And it's sad that even before his arrest for taxes, which he got more in jail for taxes than Victor Salva, the director of Jeepers Creepers, got for being a pedophile. That's why I'm people, well, he did his time, Matt. Did his time. He was barely in jail. Wesley Snipes got more jail time for tax evasion. So it shows that, you know, apparently the law and American government care more about taxes than pedals. And Victor Silver filmed himself doing it to the kid. 
So it's not like circumstantial evidence. No, this is like factual evidence. And he got less jail time than Wesley Snipes, who got it for taxes. But anyway, that's another deal. Sorry, I'll, I'll go on a 10 minute rant on that if I go. This is fucking bullshit. But. Also, I, I find it funny when people call me racist. And I'm like, you do know I love Predator 2, Danny Glover. You do know I'm a big Wesley Snipes fan. You do know my all-time favorite comedy is The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. But, you know, th if you hate, when people want to put you in a, a rut, they'll find any excuse to do so. But Wesley Snipes, while I was doing that before all that, Even before he went to jail for taxes, his career was still it wasn't going the best when he got into the two thousands. Because other than Blade Two, there's not a whole lot of movies in the two thousands that were that great. The Art of War is all right. I don't mind the Art of War. I would say more than all right. That's a decent film. The first Art of War. It's when you didn't have the budget anymore and you got the directed video crap. Like the Contractor, the Art of War 2. There was an Art of War 3, but it didn't have Wesley Snipes in it. But Art of War 2, Contractor, The Marksman, Seven Seconds, which is you'll remember the movie for. When you got into that stuff, it was in one ear, out the other, where in a foreign country because it's cheaper to film there. Editing, shaky cam, lack of budget, so lack of action or fights, convoluted stories about the CIA, the FBI, the USA, FDA, KFC, Steven Seagal, direct -to video territory. See, with direct -to video I would say at least Van Damme did it better, because at least he had some decent films like Replicant, In Hell, Wake of Death, uh, The Order... Dolph Lundgren did a little bit better because at least he had a couple like direct action, command performance, the Russian specialist, uh, what was the one, the, uh, the Defender, that's a decent one. Wesley Snipes direct -to video not so much, I mean, I'll, I can't think of any direct -to video ones he did that was decent. Because even like Game of Death, that was really lame. And nothing to do with the Bruce Lee movie. Uh, one, Gallo Walkers. That's a lame one. That's like a shitty version of Blade. But in, in the Wild Wild West. There's one that there's aliens. And he's like this hunter guy in the woods. I don't know. Waste of Wesley Snipes time. There's a lot of lame shit, Sally. Idea. Pretty much all of Wesley Snipes' directed video career was shit. And what is Wesley Snipes doing now? He was in Expendables 3, and that did nothing for his career. That did nothing for his career. Coming to America, oh, I f almost forgot that. He was good in the, the other Eddie Murphy film. Dynamite. Dynamite. That's a different movie, though. No. So that's Black Dynamite. That's sequel to Black Dynamite. It's uh, the Rudy Ray Moore. Oh, I can't believe I forgot it, the fucking name of that movie that Eddie Murphy was in. I can't believe I forgot that movie's name. I like the movie, but I forgot because they never released it on DVD Blu-ray, so I haven't seen it since. Because Netflix... They just pick and choose where the fuck gets a DVD Blu-ray release and what doesn't. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm pissed I don't remember that fucking name. Anyway, I'm, people say in the comment section. I apologize. He was good in that movie, but Coming to America was awful. Anyway, what I'm saying is I like Wesley Snipes. I'm just sad where his career went. The jail time, 
the bad directed video movies, nowadays floundering and shit like Coming to America 2 or Expendables 3. Cause this guy has a lot of talent, charisma, he could do comedy, he could do action, he can do drama. I mean if you watch New Jack City, he could do drama. If you watch Com White Man Can't Jump, he can do comedy. You, you watch a film like this, he could do a thriller. Action, thrill, yeah. He did do all of it. He's a good movie star, good actor. Uh, he deserves better roles nowadays. And back in the day, I liked quite a bit of his films. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I think this is one of his better ones in the 90s. I guess mean, not up there with Demolition Man. But I always enjoyed this one. Never hated it. I never really understood the hate for it. Never did, never did. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.